We now need to configure a transport so that instead of handling messages immediately, synchronously, they are sent to a transport instead and handled asynchronously. So we've already made a bit of a start. If we go over to our .emv file, when we actually pulled in Messenger, these lines were added to our uh, .emv file. So you need to choose uh, the particular transport you want to use. Choose high definition for the best viewing experience and if you'd like to join a growing group of software developers and take your skills to a new level, all you need to do is subscribe, click the little notification icon and welcome. Over the course of the series we're probably going to try out a couple of these but initially I'm going to use Doctrine. The reason for that is because it's probably the simplest to use but it's also the easiest for me to be able to show you what's going on because it uses a database that I can look in and I can actually show you the messages, show you how they're being serialized and everything like that. So whilst we probably will have a look at uh, RabbitMQ or Redis later on for the time being, let's just get things working and let's uh, have a system which can be easily explained and demonstrated. So our messenger transport DSN is going to be using Doctrine and it's going to be using the default queue on Doctrine. Let's go over to the messenger YAML file. So you'll find this inside of config, packages, and it is messenger.yaml. And so here is where you configure a transport. And so I'm going to configure one called async. So that is merely a name. That doesn't mean that this is going to work asynchronously or that you have to use this word async for it to work asynchronously is literally just a name for the transport which we are going to use. Once we've got a transport what we need to do then is set up some routing so basically you're saying which messages go on which transport. We only have one message at the moment and that was our purchase order confirmation. So I'm just going to go to that to make sure that I spell the name correctly. So purchase confirmation notification. So I even got the name of the class completely wrong there. So it's a good job I didn't just try and type it in. So here we go. We're going to route it, route our message, which is purchase confirmation notification to the async transport. So this message will now be handled by this transport, which we have just configured here. And we said that the messenger transport DSN, i.e. which transport we are using, is going to be Doctrine using a default queue. Okay, so let's go ahead and using Composer, we shall pull in Doctrine. The uh, branch for this lesson, by the way, is called part six forward slash transport setup. So uh, if you're following along or you want to pull the repo to check your work against mine, that is the branch for this recording here. Okay, so now we're going to say Composer require Doctrine. And it'll ask you a question here. It says the recipe for this package contains some Docker config. Uh, this may create or update Docker Compose YAML or update Docker file. If it exists, do you want to include Docker configuration? Whilst I am going to use Docker to uh, set up my database here, I'm, I don't want the one that it's going to give me here by default, so I'm just going to say no. If you want to use Postgres, then it might be an idea for you to say yes, but I'm just going to use my SQL. Okay, and at the end of that, it'll say some files have been created or updated to configure your new packages. Basically, if we go over to our .env file again, we should see something has been added here uh, for the database URL. So I'm just going to comment that out because like I say, we're going to use Docker. So I'm going to go to my docker compose.yaml file and I'm going to add a key here called database. And so that comes from, if we go to config packages, doctrine.yaml, it's this part of this environment variable here. So when I'm using the Symfony binary and the Symfony CLI with Docker, then I just need to take that part of that environment variable and that is what I'm referencing there. So it's the same name but in lowercase. And then I need a MySQL image. What I'm going to do is just behind the scenes complete all this. And so here's what I have. I have a service called database which is what will be found uh, by my application. And then I'm going to grab a Docker 8 image from Docker Hub. Uh, I've set up some volumes here so that my work doesn't get lost in between when I spin this up. 
and then just a couple of environment variables here which is a password for MySQL and a database name and it's going to be port 3306 on the container on my host it'll just give me a random port each time but I'll show you how we can grab that one thing I will do is go to my git ignore and I'll add this local MySQL volume to that so git ignore and then at the bottom here MySQL and before we go any further we actually need to install our doctrine transport so I can do that by saying composer require symphony forward slash doctrine hyphen messenger and it's actually complaining here because it's saying environment variable uh, not found a database URL so I was probably a bit hasty there in commenting that out in my uh, .env file so we'll just go and change that back and we'll try and run this again so it seemed a bit happier that time and now I think that I have all my working parts in place so let's go and start docker up uh, by the way if you still had this one running from the last recording then because we've made changes to our docker compose.yaml file what you'll need to run is this docker compose down and then make those changes once you've made those changes then you need to again run docker compose up hyphen d And then I'll start my server again because I'd stop that also. And then I'm going to get my MySQL port. So if I say docker ps, then I should see my containers. I'm just going to make this a little, little bit smaller. So here I have my MySQL container. And so that is the port there, 51186. So I'll go and change my... Uh, database configuration here so it's localhost port 51186 user is root password is password and we said the database is main let's just test this connection okay so I can connect to that and then we'll choose the main database so you see I've got no tables there as yet but what will happen is when I actually go and run this for the first time it will create me a messages table I'm going to open my mail catcher as well, so symphony open colon local colon webmail. Okay, so mail catcher's open, as you can see there's no messages in there as yet. So I'm going to go over to my URL. So localhost port 8000 by, and we have an exception. Serialization of class at anonymous is not allowed, so I think I know what's happened here. And we're looking at our stock transaction controller, line 36, where we're actually uh, dispatching our purchase confirmation notification. We're getting an exception here saying class at anonymous is not allowed. And the reason for that is you cannot serialize anonymous classes in PHP. Let's go over to our stocks transaction controller and just examine what's happening here. So we're creating this anonymous class for the order and we're passing it in here and the problem with that is, like I say, you can't serialize anonymous classes in PHP. However, you might have been looking at that and wondering what's going on because you probably don't know that the way that this works is that our message gets serialized and if you think about what we're trying to do here, we're writing our logic in PHP but then we're sending it to a completely different technology, whether that be a MySQL database in our case, uh, which is which Doctrine is handling for us, or whether you send it to something like Redis or AMQP. It needs to be, this message needs to be in a format which can be read by all of those things. And so for that reason, it gets serialized by PHP. And so what you're left with is a string. And I'll show you that shortly, but for the time being, I can't show you anything until We've come up with a solution uh, to get us around this. So I'm thinking what we'll do is instead of passing in an order, which is not a great practice anyway, because this is being serialized, you should keep the data fairly small and light. And so instead of passing in an entire order, what we'll do is we'll pass in just the ID. So we'll say order get ID. And so this gets underlined because 
our purchase confirmation notification is expecting an object. Let's change this to either an int or a string. That will become clear later on, but we'll not dwell on it just for now. Here we're going to say that this will be an int or a string. And instead of it being get order, we'll change the name to get order ID. And this also will become order ID as well as this. And so now let's go to our purchase confirmation notification handler. Because we've got some things to change here also. So the content of our PDF here where we were getting the ID of the order. Now we can actually just simplify this and say get order ID. And then here we were actually trying to get an email. Let's go back to our stocks transaction control and we'll just copy that email address from there. Okay, so still quite a lot of hard coding. But that's okay, we're just getting things working for the time being. And then here again, we're just going to change this line here to say get order ID. And I think that's everything that we need to fix. So let's actually go back to our browser and let's run this again. Okay, so this time it looks like it's been successful. Thanks, we've emailed you your contract note. If I look at my mail catcher, you'll see that there's nothing in there. And if I refresh it, still nothing in there. Let's go over to the database and see if there's anything in there. If I just hit refresh here in table plus, we now have a new table called messenger underscore messages. If I click on that, you'll see that we have a record in here. And so there's a few parts to this record. We have an ID, we'll come back to the body in a minute. Headers, queue name default. So remember we said that we were going to send this to the default queue on the doctrine transport. And then we have a created at timestamp and an available at timestamp and delivered at, which is null. So this is suggesting this hasn't actually been delivered. And then we have the body, which is a string, which has been serialized, but part of this represents our message. I'll go back to PHP Storm and I'll just create a scratch file. So if you're using PHP Storm, you can do this. You can just create a scratch file, which is a temporary file just for messing about with. If I hit enter there and I type PHP, so now I have a PHP file. I'll just make up a little variable name and then I'll paste in that body. And so some of this stuff you won't be able to recognize, things like envelopes and stamps. So we might cover that later on. But this bit down at the bottom, if I just drop it onto its own lines, here is our serialized message. So app message purchase confirmation notification. And then we also have properties on that message. So app message purchase confirmation notification order ID and the I means that it's an integer and the one is the actual value. And so if you don't know much about PHP and how PHP serializes classes, then check out my PHP course. I'll leave a link to it in the description. But basically what it does is it serializes it into a string, but in a way that it can actually be read and the uh, objects can be reconstructed when it needs to be by PHP. Okay, so we need to get this going because at the moment, if I go back and I just keep refreshing this, so I'll do this a few times, and if I go over to the database, so here we have a bunch of unhandled messages. If we look at our mail catcher, as you can see, no emails have been sent. So what we need to do is we need to set off a worker to process those messages. So back to my terminal and the command that I want is this. Symphony console messenger consume and then the name of the transport. And these parts here, the VV, means that it'll show you some information regarding the messages. It'll show when they've been handled successfully, etc. So let's hit go. Okay, and so what you see happening there is all the messages being actually handled. And so at the bottom here, you should be able to see this. Message app message purchase confirmation notification handled by app message handler purchase confirmation notification handler. So when we see purchase confirmation notification was handled successfully, 
then that means that those messages should have been worked off that queue. We shouldn't see them anymore in the database and our emails should have been sent. So let's go and check that out. If I go back to the database and hit refresh, we now have an empty message queue. If I go over to mail catcher, as you can see, I now have six emails have arrived. Click on one of those, as you can see, the contract note is attached. This has worked exactly as we want it to do. It wasn't handled straight away, it was sent to a queue called default on our transport and a queue worker just pop those messages off one by one first in first out so now that we have a working system it means that we can go and dive a little deeper into messenger and we'll also reconsider some of our design let's move on if you've enjoyed this video and you'd like youtube to show you more of my content all you need to do is subscribe and click the notification icon and also if you're interested in my full length courses then make sure you check out my site at garyclark.tech i'll leave a link on the screen and in the description